Hello everybody, I'm Markiplier, and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the sequel. <laughs> anyway, welcome mm. back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. <laughs> no, this is just a demo, because the real version's supposed to come out later. <laughs> Wait, is that exactly what he said? So, I don't know, something like that. I haven't watched Markiplier in a while. Did you just... <laughs> The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Oh yeah, what do you remember from last time? Because it's been seven to eight days since the last time we played this. Uh, we're gonna throw Jake Marshall under the bus. Yeah, we gotta accuse someone here. Yeah. I bet didn't come back. Ah oh, shit. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. Oh wait, why did I'm, why was I upset? I already forgot. <laughs> I forgot to. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Here, you can come closer to me. Sir, are you allowed to drink in here? Witness, please state your name and occupation. <laughs> me, partner? Oh, I'm just a, just a man. Same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. The Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know. You're a patrolman. I love how he speaks while he's drinking. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, Your Honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edward description. <laughs> I've never heard Ed heard Edward described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day the crime took place. Is this correct? Going to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado's soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. What? Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Oh, me too, Judge. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In plain old English. I don't think he can do that. I want to see Jake Marshall go crazy and break character. <laughs> My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street-side saloon at the time I went down. You were drinking? <laughs> I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Wait a minute, you were drinking on the job? <laughs> I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you didn't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras in the ID card reader. Oh, I guess. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. <laughs> He's not that good with machines, or with following orders. No oh, shit. Everyone's got their weaknesses, now don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? Damn, everyone ragging on fucking Edgeworth. <laughs> this one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Thanks, Judge. Really appreciate that. Day of the crime. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bow and eight archer- fuck. <laughs> archer. <laughs> what exactly do you- did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room is so still. Even time dies in there. I was just a caretaker who entered the... Entered? Entered? I don't know. Entered the recordings. You entered them? Videos of nothing aren't that useful. When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. Oh, uh, it feels like what um, Old Bag did. That's the other place. If nothing unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. So, in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room? Because I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> no, it 
Desperado I know lets rules get in his way. No Desperado I know joined the police force. So Officer J Officer Marshall, I was about to say Officer Jake Marshall. <laughs> On the day of the crime, just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. There was a rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner. Can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. You used to be a detective, so you're used to the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you don't know how a fingerprint. Oh, shit. And yet, you don't know about the fingerprint locking system? Sorry, partner. I ain't go with machines. Couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, um, incredible. <laughs> the sensors on the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that he mentions it, Detective Gumshoe says something like that, too. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? I was drinking on the job. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I was on a street side saloon at the time it went down. What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even angel steak lunches can beat that parlor's Longole Sepia Pasta. Do you mean to tell us? You abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? No, no, pasta. <laughs> not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. Oh, this has a leaked tossed you a lesson. That's strange. This thing, it's usually where Edward says. Did you not want to raise this year? <laughs> I'm just an innocent traveling man. If you're out of ammo, this time. Okay. <laughs> out of ammo, Officer Marshall? That's right, partner. Or as you'd call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you better draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Hmm, one thing seems clear. Despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. Just like everyone knows about 15 minutes to save you 15% or more in car insurance. <laughs> Apparently your supervisors don't. Okay, I have a trump card on my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it though, I better up the ante. Alright, I think it's just supposed to just present. What am I on this same end? <laughs> I think it's supposed to be on the last one with this fingerprint. Yeah, that one. Oh, I mean to hit that one. <laughs> it's okay. Howie. I'm actually surprised he's been able to drink and shave his beard in here. Because that's like a weapon. Alright. So, let's see here. We have so much fun. Evidence. Holy no. shit. Everything is relevant. It's interesting. I, didn't, I haven't taken a look at that one. Yeah, that, that shows where all the bloody fingerprints were. Yeah. Is there anything on this one? Nah. It just fell out. I saw 9 11 is written on this tag. It seems to be more evidence from that incident. That's the game. <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to do with that, <laughs> to be completely honest. I don't know what the point of that one is. Should I pull up his hand? I think it's that, because that shows that he was in there. Yeah, I, I didn't... Uh, he, uh, Phoenix said, like, oh, like, I have, like, a trump card. I didn't know if this was the trump card. I think it is. But he said I should up the ante. Which I have no idea. makes me idea. think he wants to use something else. I have no idea. But, I mean, it's this is the thing that I would want to bring up, so... Yeah. You did it! <laughs> Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called to testify like this? 
I'm drawn. You weren't at the at the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or, to be exact, a handprint. Hmm. Listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crib. I pay my respects, that is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. Yeah, but they would be covered in blood. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Damn, they, they, that's from what he looks like from the back. I guess so. <laughs> Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your blood-stained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away, however. A luminal test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? Seems to me there ain't a person in this room with that head on his shoulders. What are you talking about? I, I presented my thing. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall. About the. Oh, yeah, about the blood stained fingerprints. <laughs> Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. You see, I was bleeding out, and then I touched my locker, which happened to have blood on it. <laughs> like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. I don't know if that's how that works. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. Bloodstain and fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I had nothing to do with it. Hmm, the witness's explanation appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine this witness. This guy's hiding something, I can feel it. Don't have any chance to prove it. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be at that. Uh, fuck. In that evidence room. That was disgusting. <laughs> That's because you, how do I put it, pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without ever knowing it. And the bloody handprint in the locker, the prints have been wiped away. Okay. How's that any different from... Well, it's oh, oh, locker. Oh, yeah. I see that, that part. One of them just happened to be in the same place as the bloody handprint. So then, what about the bloody handprint? Wasn't mine. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. I feel like that's one in a million. The chances of it happening is a million <laughs> one! On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward from me with a, f no, with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kinda like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. He's right. Although seemingly alike, they're totally different. I don't see what... What does that say? Homonyms. Homonyms have to do with this. Do you know what a homonym is? Is when two words sound exactly the same but mean different things? Yeah, it's like there and there. Okay. And there. <laughs> dear, dear. Yeah. Or didn't you know that the murderer was wearing gloves? How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. 
There was a blood stain at the scene, thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm, so that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This seal of blood in the desert is just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. As long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Yeah, no shit. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. We got the whole entire testimony. Too bad it wasn't me in that video part. What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. Like when you're driving a car. <laughs> the camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't showing. If someone was familiar with the camera spot, they could have leave the room without being caught on tape. Yeah, it doesn't help that the fucking blue badger's there, too. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well... Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. What are you thinking? Hmm. I'm thinking unstable jar is very <laughs> useful here. Nah! Uh, I remember pointing it out in the last one, but I don't know if you remember it. Wonder. Wonder who's is that? What? what seven 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 seven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just repeat it just in case you've forgotten and whatnot. But during the tape, you can see that something appears at the very end of it that wasn't there the entirety of the tape. It's like after Meekins gets knocked out, there's like something new. Something new? Yeah. Aw, oh, you can't fucking rewind. Like. Wow, we're looking at the Blue Badger for five fucking minutes. No. What's it? You're squishing the big chunk! I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. Camera went on a six mile hike today. <laughs> yeah. You had fun though. It wasn't just like straight on the ground. It was freaking up and down and through a creek. Mm. Yeah, there's Meekins. We walked through three creeks. Man, these limited 3D graphics are so charming. <laughs> Alright, see? There's nothing over there. Blue Badger. Meekins dies. <laughs> Confirmed! Pans back over. Ah. Uh. And that just so happens to be Marshall's fucking thing. <laughs> You know what, sure. I'll show evidence. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. <laughs> Good fun. <laughs> now then, let's have another look at the video. Look. Show us this incriminating evidence of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall. <laughs> oh, thank God we can fast forward, I forgot. I was wondering for a quick second, I'm like, how come we can't see his face, but we can see Officer Meekins, but I guess Meekins is, like, hunched over like a gremlin. 
And then he's dead. <laughs> there you go. You did it! <laughs> you pointed out a piece of cloth! Bringing to our attention back to the security camera. It's a mistake, I'm afraid. You're soon up. You're. S it's a mistake. I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. How many times can Phoenix fuck up her lines? <laughs> the days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? I got you, bitch. <laughs> Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. <laughs> The key lies in a certain locker shown in this video. As you can see, it was the Blue Badger's locker. <laughs> that locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Couldn't they have sped this shit up? <laughs> As you can see, Meekins is dead. <laughs> Always has been. <laughs> Oh, the white cloth, it's gone. What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then, it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your, your locker when the camera was turned away. Order, order. It would seem that's the only... Hold your horses. Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. Bitch. <laughs> Murderer needed to hide something, so he opened a locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he opened it. He happened to choose mine. That's not how those lockers work, dumbass. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a one man? Because you kind of are. <laughs> This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Oh, I hate to ran your parade. But you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call your bluff. You say I opened that locker. Now prove it. Here's a locker. <laughs> uh, I guess that's why we have the fucking locker. Because it's supposed to be like, yeah, only the detective assigned to it can open it. Uh, fingerprint sensor? Yeah, we got you. We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by a detective they belong to. What, what kind of crazy talk is this? It's called the future. Well, Detective Gumshoe didn't mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. Uh, there are even some people in the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in A words or less? Ah, shit. Wait, what is he eating? Is that jerky? Looks like beef jerky. I only got one word for you, partner. No. I want to know what he was eating. I want it. <laughs> order, order, order. Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you it's no jerk, Officer Marshall. Now, now then, please tell us what you were doing at the at the evidence room at the time of the crime. Ole, please answer the question. <laughs> Thanks, Judge. What is he now, a, a bullfighter? <laughs> That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure out the rest from here. We can? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Have a look at these floor plans. There's no place for anyone to hide in the evidence room. Yet, yeah, Officer Meekin didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then, where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. Why do I gotta do everything around here? That's right, it's only pos it's the only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. I can't do a bitch. I like how we're still calling them the killer, where Meekins is alive. He, he is a victim, but he but he is a, not dead. <laughs> Why do I feel like the only place is like around here, here, right? Why well, then? Maybe. Well, I, 
I don't know, cause like, how would he have not got- so the camera's like right here. Yeah. I think what they want you to think is that that wasn't Detective Goodman. Wait, so... No, wait, what, what did the thing ask? I wasn't fully paying attention. <laughs> Where was Officer Marshall? Oh, well, it's, it's... Because remember, uh, Detective Goodman was wearing a white coat, and then all of a sudden I, there's a white coat sticking out. I thought out they were asking, like, <laughs> where was the, like, killer at? Oh. And I was like, well, I don't know how the fuck he got out. Like, <laughs> I'm, gu I'm guessing when it was panned over, he hid behind the blue badger and then probably, like, left that way. Yeah. But. Officer Marshall was standing right here. You think after mm. this crime, they moved the security camera to be in the corner of the room instead of, like here. <laughs> Probably. So, Officer Meekins didn't notice him standing there. That's almost as credible as Meekins' warp theory. His warp theory? Oh. Oh. Huh? <laughs> Your chamber's empty, partner. Better reload. Now they're getting it up on me. Perhaps. You should think a little more about where Officer Marshall was. Yeah. Officer Meekins should have seen him in the evidence room. Them oh, I forgot. They're trying to label Meekins as a fucking killer, so it is. I oh, it's, forgot it's, about that. <laughs> it's, oh, it's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Well, that's serious. Yeah. I, yeah I, 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 sorry. Yeah, people in the audience are probably like, "Are you guys fucking stupid?" <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> Officer Marshall was standing right here. We should have probably knew that because the, like, the music continued. Yeah. There, but that's. That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Well, correct, unless that man wasn't Detective Goodman. Well, I was still on the right track, we just picked the wrong option. I believe the victim in this video is Officer Marshall. It was you, dressed up as Detective Goodman. Boy, that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Does Meekins even know what Goodman looks like? Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. May I point out that Officer Meekins does not know Detective Goodman? He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his ID card, sir. Yes, and how did the. the <laughs> how did the Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled the knife on me! Something about the officer's story puzzled me. Oh wait, this kind of makes sense. Cause if, it, if yeah, cause if you showed it, it'd been like two different people. No, cause what if the what if the knife is the one he just uses to <laughs> to cut his to cut his <laughs> yeah, beard. he was trying to shave his beard. He's like, oh, no, hurry! <laughs> if the man had had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? That's why English is such a bad language. Yeah. If the man had had, that's proper English and yeah, but to me, it looks like a fucking typo. <laughs> Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer's simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on the ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed it, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized that man was Detective Goodman. He shows it, he's like, yeah, I got a tan. Yeah, <laughs> I went to Florida. <laughs> Did you... Did you have something to say to this, Officer Marshall? You got quite an imagination, partner. Well... We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. You're not a detective, though. Unless you have hard evidence proven I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, do you care for my beard? <laughs> it's a lovely beard, Your Honor. <laughs> do you have any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall addressed him as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. Couldn't they just make him open the locker and show what coat is in there? Like yeah. whatever piece of cloth is hanging out? I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who could take the desert eat. Yeah, fuck you. Ugh. This can't be happening. It was so obvious he's the one. What can I do? 
You didn't get it. Hmm. Are you actually gonna do something? Looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. Fuck. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. Thanks, Edgeworth. The basics? For me, it would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yeah, he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. I mean, we can clearly see why. <laughs> The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps... Perhaps the video is the key to all of our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video might be my only shot. Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape. After committing a crime, the witness opened the, the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show us why the witness had to open his locker. Don't you love the blue badger? Wait a second. Yeah, what's up? Uh, what is it? Fast forward? Yeah, I'm just fast forwarded while paused. Oh. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I was like, why is he going so slow? <laughs> and here's Meekins about to get his shit wrecked. I think that was it. Yeah, I think so too. It's because it was covered in blood. Yeah. I'm gonna take a shot at it. So I do the heart. <laughs> For some reason, you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman, and enter the evidence room. Though I don't know what, to what end yet. Yet. Yeah. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID, you pulled the knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked. And the white cloth you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, partner. Damn. Man, Mr. Popular over there. I wish I was popular. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting notifications from LinkedIn and my Google Calendar. Nice. Are you getting officer, like, it's not officers, offers from LinkedIn and being like, we want you to apply to the grocery store with your application. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we need 17 years of college experience for you to work at this uh, Target. Yeah. <laughs> now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, why would Edgeworth be happy? Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? What, SL9? Officer Marshall, tell us, tell the court what you did, all of it. Alright, seems the time has come. Officer Marshall's confession. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him, planning to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. I managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. Damn. So the supposed victim was really you? 
There's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meek and Spanish cut his own hand. <laughs> My guess is he's the donor. Yeah, why didn't you guys get it tested? <laughs> there was way too much blood for a small donation. Here. There you go. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. When you say it, you mean. Do you even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with a transfer that day. Damn. Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But you did just. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at myself one more time. Huh. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he need to care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... I sold the detective's ID and dress lock him up on to check out the evidence. <sighs> oh god, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer. I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. Or the detective's ID card. I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How the fuck did he get there so fast? The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean, the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Is this where it's going to come in and say, uh, yeah, it was open? No. I mean, you saw the light on it. There was no light on. What do you mean? Oh. Oh, yeah, that too. I forgot. <laughs> There's a lot of things. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. Oh, yeah. But he could because that rubber glove just happened to be in, stuck in the door. That means the Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. I wasn't. Oh yeah. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins to come in. You pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off. Let's just say uh, I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one-in-a-million type of person. Yeah. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his race this year. Uh, when did Edgeworth get so much influence? Edgeworth is an influencer in the police department. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. Sorry I had to turn out that way. But me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm, so you knocked Officer Beacons out and... I managed to escape, which... I knew which areas I wouldn't get caught on camera. So you did your research beforehand. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm yawning. I tried giving him sugar, but none of the candy up here he could eat, so... Those who go into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. Security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, Jake would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is, on that day... 
There was there wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. But the blood found on the scene certainly indicates the crime took place. <laughs> what are you blind? Very. The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from that locker? Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What, Mr. Edgeworth? Where is that evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. What, you mean this? And we just pull it out of our pants? <laughs> it's like the knife. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. It is? Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer? This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. You can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. Great. <laughs> I can't just forget SL9 incident, you know why? No. That case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for his crimes. One thing I can say for sure is he deserved his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out. But there's something that still bothers me. Oh. Something went down at that trial. Something no one would talk about. Well, what is it? What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think his real reason is. I had a feeling we'll wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way in that case. I better check out a look at the files. What the fuck's in the files? I already forgot everything about this case. <laughs> Close, perpetrator John Doe, crime, silly murder, sentence, death, victims. Oh, Neil Marshall. <gasps> oh, his fucking brother or some shit. Head prosecutor Miles Edgeworth witnesses Lana Sky, Emma Sky. Task Force, Damon Gant, Lana Sky, Head Investigator, Bryce Goodman, Investigators, Jake Marshall, Angels of Star. What if Bruce Goodman was actually the serial murderer? Wouldn't that be crazy? Damn. And, and yeah, and, and he's a detective too. Yeah. Damn. That would that would have been some like what? Some light Yagami shit? Yeah, and he like threw this poor guy under the bus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the very last one. So no. I guess the files. Yeah, let's go. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you're so you care so much about SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I had the SL9 incident file here. The name, Marshall, is mentioned in here. And a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? How do you not know? You're the prosecutor of the case. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard that name. Two years ago. Uh. He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. Oh. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? Oh. He was my brother. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, the, the then Deputy Chief of Police. 
Oh, so that's him right there. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. That's what Joe Dark looks like? <laughs> Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with its resolution, Officer Par Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he, so he retorted him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. Yeah, but it did at the prosecutor's office! Things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office. This fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance. It's gotta be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office's parking lot was the real one. Shit. <laughs> Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. Shit. But wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. Uh, but... There's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. Seems to me, this boy's got the draw on you, partner. But don't act like you're higher than me! <laughs> All the mysteries at the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Sky. And the testimony of one Miss Angel Star is completely incontestable. But if you have a response, make it a single word or less. Can, can the single word I have is just fuck? Oh. Mm. I, oh. <laughs> Shit. You are so silly today. <laughs> I rest my case. God damn it. <laughs> it seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. God damn it, shut up. Disproving the alleged murder at the police department. <sighs> God damn it. Why do we gotta be good at our job? There's, there's no doubt what I've proven today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera tape really was fake. But I didn't realize that I'd be end up proving Lana's guilt. Now that the time for the verdict has arrived, this court finds a defendant. Fuck! <laughs> Hold it! Oh my god, it was her! <laughs> you, your Honor, wait! Uh, Emma? The defense has an objection, a scientific objection. Right? We do? Well, what do you mean, right? <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor? Oh, um, in a sense. Please, Your Honor, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. Why are you asking him? Well, I guess, I guess, yeah. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. Nice, thanks. I, I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out that SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Ah, she mentions it. The name of both Sky Sisters are in the file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. 
So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. But I left only one thing, the other handprint. What? You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. How did you get in there? Did you find something? Uh, no! Awesome! <laughs> Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. But you have something to share, right? Um, is that all? <laughs> Please tell me, man. I'm just a high school student. Uh, and I'm just an attorney. <laughs> but Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If you can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. I am? If anyone can save Lana, it's you. <laughs> me? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. There's no way that's three minutes. With regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um... It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still... If you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be- Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Well, I'm trying! Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> if I ever needed to concentrate, it's now. What would be wrong with that, that handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? There's no problem! <laughs> I think we get a game over immediately. You know what's weird? Like, if Meekins and, uh, and Marsha were in there, like, for sure, the, his locker had a bloody hand on it because, like, he touched it and whatnot. He was wearing gloves the entire time. Why would he take them off and whatnot? Yeah, I'm curious about that, too. Unless... Also, if he took it off, it wouldn't be bloody. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, Because like, it's, I... like, it's like, how does he have... Two different handprints, both of them are bloody, when yeah. if he's wearing gloves, his hand would be completely fine. It's not like he just like took off the glove, rubbed blood on his hand, yeah. then touched another locker. Yeah, because if he was wearing gloves and touched the locker, it would leave a no fingerprint thing. Although, I'm curious. So now this... it's like a left hand print? Yeah, this is a left hand print. Yeah. Where's the uh, other one? I don't think we have it in here. Maybe if we object to it, we'll have to see it again. Yeah. But if they're both lefties, then that d makes absolutely no fuck. Also, why would you wear one glove and it's not right. another? Uh, it's a right hand. Oh, shit. This handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems to clear is you're grasping, Mr. Wright. A grasping. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes. Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Nothing is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood. Please tell me it's the blue badger. Please I'm, tell I'm me it's think, the blue badger. I'm thinking it is the blue badger, because uh, it, it is it covering his locker. Way. Yeah. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. Well, though there's evidence here. There's gotta be something I can use. <laughs> Please let I'm, me I'm, I'm, pre I'm presenting it. I'm presenting it. Yeah, cause it was, wasn't it like right there? In the way of the camera? What about that piece of plywood? The blue badger. Mascot of the police force. I'm thinking it's right considering he has a unique dialogue for it. Yeah. Oh, so like, that head's in the way of Gumshoe's locker. Yeah. I've defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. I don't want to. <laughs> Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So, watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? what you don't fucking see it? Edward fucking sees it! 
That's right, so long as the Blue Badger's dancing here. It would be impossible to place a hamper on this spot of the locker. What? Oh, so I forgot. Did Meekins go in front or behind the Blue Badger when he was walking by it? In front. Okay. So that means, uh, just exactly what does that mean? Come on, go, come on, Judge. Get, get a fucking roll. <laughs> it means it can't have been done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma. On that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? If we that silly little fucking pose. After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. Yeah. Yeah, without moving it, yeah. So that means his blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment. I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my courtroom. Hey, that's a Pokemon. <laughs> it may sound far-fetched, <laughs> Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, on the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But, but how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand in which in which a trivial amount of blood left. Or oh, fell, whatever. The problem is, the other time. Wait, do you think it was... So... I feel like that jar was... Wait a minute, was, can you pull up the court record again? Of the, uh, the log that has all, like, all the cards? That one. Okay. What I was proposing is that top one is Gumshoe. You think Gumshoe's number is all sevens? Well, because he said he said he was in there trying to. Well, I guess he did that afterwards. Yeah, that was like the next day, right? When he was in there. Yeah, because I was I was wondering if that like a uh, big like jar was filled with blood or something like that. It fell over and like when he was putting the pieces back yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, then he like put his hand on the. <laughs> I was thinking that's what happened, and he, and he was just, like, unlucky to yeah. be caught in it, but I, I don't think that's actually the case. That would be really cool if Gumshoe was there long enough that his numbers are all sevens. Yeah. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown in this tape. It had to been when. It had to have been Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. That's ridiculous. I refuse to obsect... <laughs> Accept your absurd <laughs> claim. <laughs> the murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, it does not explain the blood mark on this locker. So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in that ev evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us, when did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. Proof is shown when the murder took place. There's only one, pi one, pi <laughs> one piece of evidence. <laughs> Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? I mean, I guess I was like sort of on the right track, right? With the log? Fuck. Oh, was it not? <laughs> Maybe not. If, if the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, the ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh. ID card rec Wait, was it actually the right one? And the dialogue is just continuing? With, and the music's just continuing? Yeah. Because it's intense music. Officer Meekins brought in the blue badger panel into the evidence room at... Let's see here. Let's see here. 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be... 4.40 p.m. Ah. Ah. Miles Edgeworth, it was you? <laughs> ma 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 Miles Edgeworth, just what have you done? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. <sighs> Drop the act, witness. It 
doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm, nope, I ain't getting it. <clears throat> I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murder. I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. But what about in 20 minutes? <laughs> that would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let me look at the chart again. There's only one other card remaining, seven, all sevens. Talk about a lucky yeah. number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. Oh yeah, they swiped and they're like, oh yeah, th this detective, uh, let me hold the door for you. <laughs> yeah. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with, what is that? Seven eight, sevens. Eight sevens? That's seven of them. Seven, seven sevens. <laughs> oh, maybe it was Damon Gant. Maybe that's his number. Maybe, hey. I, maybe I was right all along that he's actually, uh, he's actually a criminal mastermind. Yeah. Also, I feel like with the, like all those numbers like that, it would have to be someone high up. Yeah. And whatnot, because that'd be one hell of a coincidence of you getting assigned an ID card for the police department. And it's all one number. Or it's like a temporary one. Yeah. That was my other thought. Like the guess one. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number is seven 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 seven. <laughs> That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. What? At least, at present. What? Explain yourself, son. Ah! The ID number 77777777 belongs to someone with the rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. Damn. But that's ridiculous, just how... I'm not finished talking, Mr. Ray. <laughs> there is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is accepted... An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? What? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Ooh. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes? No, not to you. To her. The defendant's sitting over there. Your own little executive. What? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. <laughs> What's her ID number? And it's not 777777. Okay. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I wanted to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident. Oh my god, you let it go. <laughs> Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Ooh. Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine. Oh fuck, you're squishing me. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt the, the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. Bring! <laughs> Lana. I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with that law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I didn't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer it? 
Yeah, why you gotta go fucking around the clock with this? Dramatic crimes require dramatic measures. That's what- that's just the way it is. We did what we had to do. In order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But, Mama! Even if it involved forging evidence. Damn! Now we know two prosecutors that forge evidence. <laughs> Actually, three! <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. No. N -n no! I'm melting. Order, order, order. How does your mind cause such a stir? The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have been to wait until the following day. <laughs> Save up to this point? Well, Cameron, how do you feel? <laughs> That's crazy. I'm I'm curious. I still don't know who who fucking who fucking did it after all because like I have my suspicions about Dam and Gant, but I still don't know who did it because now we're ending off this trial with like another cliffhanger where it's like inconclusive because we need the evidence of what she forged and whatnot. We need the evidence of whose ID card that was because. Yeah. It could just be Damon Gantz. It could be someone else that we just don't know about. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, uh, we'll figure out on the third day investigation, the last one. Yeah. But, I mean, at least we're getting somewhere. Like, it, yeah. Uh, we we figured out the whole crime that happened on uh, on that day. In, in Well, <laughs> we figured out the crime that happened in the police department just for another crime to have happened in the police department. Yeah. And so, maybe the original crime didn't actually even happen at the prosecutor's office? It happened in the... Like, that was the aftermath of the original crime? Yeah, and then Lana Sky might have been, like, trying to cover it up, and so she, like, made it look like she was... She was the one who killed him, so she was, like... Uh, what is the name? Oh, fuck, what is it? An ass accomplice? Well, either she was, like, an accomplice, or... She was just, like... She wanted to be, like, instead of her being framed, she was, like, framing herself. Yeah. I don't know. But I guess we'll learn more in this investigation, and this investigation should raise quite a few red flags and and tell us the direction that we're going to go and who we're going to kill because <laughs> every single person dies after they commit murder, I guess. Yeah. But, um... Not all of them. Yeah, all of them. Well, there's a... We only get to see one person in the Miles investigation come back, and he... Well, he's still in prison, but, like... <laughs> what, is it, is it... Is it the fucker? Von Karma? I mean, that... I was, like, past events. You get to see Von Karma again. I was referring to Frank Saw It. <laughs> oh. He's just a random one-off guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways. Get to look forward to in the next one where we get to figure out some more things, yeah, do some more investigating. Uh, I need to fuck around and find out. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> Who much. Who owns eight, seven cards? <laughs> yeah, it's seven. Yeah. But anyways. Seven, eight cards, whatever. Who owns all the sevens? Yeah. Who's good at gambling? <laughs> Me. I love gambling. <laughs> Let's go gambling. <laughs> but thank you all for watching. Until next time. Bye. Bye-bye.